All right, welcome to another league. This is going to be the last uh, league of the day. We already streamed two leagues previous to this one. Uh, we made small changes, but as of right now, this is uh, the least that I'm the most likely to submit on, on Austin for the GP. So yeah, we're going to give it a shot and we're going to see how things work out. But yeah, I'm, throughout this league, I'm going to mute myself at different times because I it's 2.30 p.m. here and I'm going to have my lunch. But I didn't want to keep all of you waiting, so this is the perks of live TV, you know? So we're going to be... Oh yeah, look at this, look at this wrap. Tuna salad wrap. Looks great. Uh, I don't think I really like this hand. We don't even have enough land drops to get value from these explorers. So I'm just going to ship it. Uh, this one is actually better. Because we already have a titan. So we're only missing actual lands. Uh, because we're missing lands, I think I'm going to ship the Asusa over the explorer. Because I want to get deeper into my deck. Wow, remember this deck? I guess Hfang1 still remembers. Damn. Affinity. It's been a minute. Holy crap. That's an early plating, but it's not the end of the world yet. So what I'm looking for is a green bounce land. Now any untap, any untap land gives me Titan mana next turn, thanks to this scout. So that's actually not bad. But if I whiff, it can be very problematic. Okay, that card doesn't really matter. All right, take seven here. On top land, please on top land. Give me that on top land. Wait, what? Huh. Weird. Uh, I doesn't do it. Explore. Hmm. Okay. So if we don't die, seven. 8, 9, 10, which we are not dead on board. But any artifact, that's it for my opponent. Any artifact, that's it. So we're not looking good here. We were very, very close there. My body has exaxes.
All right. We have a really good plan post board. For the mana cost. So actually, I could see actually shaving a mist field of the dead. Yeah, it seems much better. All right. Cavern is on top green. Is it on top source that taps for green on one to cast scout? Mm. Mm. These are the hands. God damn it! I think I'm gonna keep it. We can whiff, and that would make me very very sad. We wave chat. Like his castle is can effectively tap for two mana. Come on. You're seeing how unlucky I am, right? You're seeing how unlucky I am. I look 10 cards into my deck. I look at the top 20 cards and I was not able to find one of my 9 bounce lands. I guess 8 bounce lands. Uh, that guy needs to die right now. Yeah, but bounce land on top doesn't even do it anymore. Unfortunately, I think I'm at a point where I need to pack for Rex Age to kill this. Which feels terrible. Because I'm basically double time walking myself. But I don't think I can beat this card otherwise. Like, this is going to grow much more quickly than I can afford. Oh, that's bad. Snapping off that block, obviously. Uh, can my opponent set up lethal next turn? They probably can. Come on. I'm playing 29 lands. How do I miss on lands so often? My opponent might be able to set up a lethal attack with Ink Moth here. I didn't do the math, but it's possible. So it's like 1, 2... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are very close. They're actually very, very close. Yeah, this is fine. So this this basically sets up lethal for my opponent over two turns. This is just outrageous. This is just outrageous. Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. This is just ridiculous.
Yeah. We just went a short of Titan all game, yeah. It's kind of brutal, because, like, we actually found... Both Once Upon a Times find, found me a land, right? Like, both of these actually found me a land. So it's not like I I kept a greedy hand. Like, I kept a, a one land hand with two Once Upon a Times, and both Once Upon a Times found me a land. But then I just never draw... Never. It's been five turns, and I have not been able to draw another land. Who plays Rawats in 2020? My opponent, apparently. The worst thing is like my opponent could go all in on Bolt Scourge this turn. And I guess that that would be the best line for them. <clears throat> to set up lethal over two turns with this Bolt Scourge. But if they go if they go all in on the Ink Moth and they don't set up lethal, then I actually am the one that can kill them. That I just blow up the Ink Moth and that's it. So that's three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Yeah, my opponent has lethal here, and I'm tapped out. Maybe they're trying to figure out whether they play Armed Force of Vigor. And that's the worst part. Like, I actually had a bunch of really good cyber cards that I could have drawn. That even, at least if I'm not drawing a Titan, if I'm not able to cast a Titan, at least I can, I can, you know, stop what my opponent's doing. But I literally drew all of my enablers and, and no, no lands. Robots will such sweet decks in its day. Yeah, I, I call it affinity. I think that not calling it affinity is is just wrong. You gotta you gotta be respectful to the history of the deck, right? That's like what got it what 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 it, what the reason why it was cool, right? Like what what if we had force here? What if we have force here? How silly would that have been? Of course, it's always right up there. Yeah. Got to catch you live. How do you feel about 30 land lists? How do you run in a big tournament? Yes, it's actually what I'm thinking of running in, uh, in the GP this weekend. Um, okay. It's an awkward hand, but I think it has a lot of potential. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to once upon first. Hmm, I think I'm going to get Breeding Pool here. Let's start there. And then we're going to explore on two, play Simic Growth. Bounce the West. We can transmit that for a Titan. Basic forest. Uh oh. Huh. Mm. Well, we can't beat Blood Moon, so I think I'm gonna actually use this turn to play out my scout and try to beat uh, like Stone Rain, right? So I have to pick my battles basically. Scout is going to be my way of beating Stone Rain, and I can't beat Blood Moon. Hey! Knight of the Reliquary? Okay, we can beat that. We can certainly beat that, that's for sure. Yeah, so and the fact that my opponent's playing Nether Alcray, right? like if they're playing Knight and Blood Moon in the same deck. I don't even know how to finish that sentence. <laughs> I don't even know how to finish that sentence. Stoneforge Mystic. Sword of Feast and Famine.
Let's go, Squitter. <laughs> I think I just let this go. It's a bad draw. So I'm going to take one shot from this sword. But I think it's very important for me to blow this up. I'm going to discard the Asusa. <clears throat> I could have played Explosives on one, blown up the Arbor Elves, and then Noble Hark, and then my opponent cannot sword and attack this turn. But I think it's just too important for me to. It's too important for me to destroy this sword for good. And I can start worrying about finding the Titan and all that stuff afterwards. But I. Like, priority number one is to get rid of this. If only we had gemstone. But we're fine. We have a Jukibog. We got the Jukibog, so we're okay. Mismatch pools. Yeah, I know. Gross. It's even worse, like, in paper. Like, I... I just had two breeding pools and I went to, to my LGS the other day and I got the third breeding pool and the only one that they had was literally the only art that I didn't have. So in paper, I have one of each breeding pool, which is disgusting. See? One of each. The correct one, the semi-correct one, and the worst possible. Gross. But... I don't know, man. Feels bad. But it is what we got. Did I drop something? Yes, I did drop something. Two, two, two. two and one is worse. You think two and one is worse than one of each? Interesting concept. here the fact that they untap all their lands is kind of just adding insult to injury oh another three drop yes nice bogia Blue, green, black, this. Play my land, pass the turn. I guess I do it in upkeep. I'm gonna check with a judge to make sure you are allowed to play a deck like that before the turn. Hey, it's not that bad. I guess this was actually a mistake. I should have done it. Because now, I guess they have only one more mana, so it's it's kind of whatever. Like, they would have been able to do this. So, 
One, two, three, transmute, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, so I flash in simic growth and step. They're tapping out for something. Great. Jace the Mind Sculptor. That's like the weirdest stone blade list I've ever seen. Been away from magic for a few months, but it's great to come back and see you're still playing. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's extremely unlikely to ever change uh, game game. That is extremely unlikely to ever change. I mean, now that we dealt with the sword, we're probably just going to... It's going to take a minute, but we're probably going to just win this match. This game. I wonder if they are playing force. There's no way they can play force, right? In before the last two cards in hand are force plus blue card. They weren't. Path and response. Classic move. Field Toleria, set up the next Titan, the Cine Growth Chamber, bounce Cine Growth Chamber, pass the turn. If I read your lips, because you said a lot of. No, I said a, a something about Oko. Maybe they have Oko or something. I said something like that, I think. I don't remember. Batter Skull! Unbeatable. Yeah, then is the worst part is that we have not seen them in the last hour. Because like the games just take forever, so <laughs> we we've faced them in the past two or three hours at this point. <laughs> that I think is the most annoying part about playing against these decks. It's just like the games just take so long. But it's called Stoneblade and Jace. The only member missing from the gang is the two mana bird. Oh yeah, the the Quaddle. Oh, you mean the um, the Cobblade. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. Um. I'm actually going to attack with my zombies first, and I'm going to like suicide them into this batter skull, because that forces my opponent to use two mana, which means that they are going to be uh, they're not going to have specular mana anymore. So I know for sure that they can't like their life total is completely irrelevant, and so is mine, and my amount of zombies is also completely irrelevant because I'm going to kind of go off now. But now I know that they are tapped out of specular. Oh wow. They're even chomping there? Oof, that's value. Okay. Cool. So we're still in the same situation as earlier where if my opponent has force of negation or something, they can get me, but if they don't, they just lose. Transmute. 
let's mute. We have enough mana. Oh, but there's nothing that my opponent can have here. Cool. Because they're down to one land. All right, cool. Cast. Primeval Titan. Cast Prime Time. And here we're going to do Field of the Dead and I'm pretty sure these zombies are going to be outvaluing these batter skull quickly enough. <laughs> Squad on Hawk. I love how a lot of people try that, like, as soon as Jace was unbanned. So many people try that, and it's just like, well... The only problem about that deck is that you're playing Squadron Hawking your deck, so... <laughs> Which, to be fair, it's a pretty, pretty rough problem to have. Courser of Crucifix. So my opponent is playing, like... This reminds me of the, the band deck that at some point people started playing, like a band mid-range slash control. Bounce this, untap. One, two, three, four. Path my Titan. So if we sing if we swing everything at them, then they we don't have lethal, so I guess that we need to clear the Jace. So that's one, two, three, four, five at Jace. That forces my even Quaddle doesn't save the Jace here. And they can't have double path, so five of J's, five of them. Yeah, Martyr. Martyr is unfortunately not really a deck. One, two, three, four. Do we think we have enough zombies, chat? I don't think we have enough zombies. So let's get more. We. We zombies. Are you entertained, chat? Are you entertained? <laughs> just casually dropping nine zombies, nine two twos, just 18 power. No big deal. You got Wrath upon it? Because even if you do, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> What is this? They crack a clue. You got it. Okay, you're drawing a knight now. A lot of more players just play their pet deck. Yeah, that's that's true. When I play a simple paper specific, I try to add decks more so than whether it's good or not. I've got a friend that has played Mono Blue Murphy for like five years, loves it, never anything else. I mean, I'm kind of in a similar camp, honestly. 
like I do play something else from time to time, but in the end I always I always come back home. Always coming back home. The shadow seems great to play and have fun. Yeah, the shadow is great. That's why I play Death and Dax is brutal. We're into people that have no idea how Tetris works. I believe pass it with the trigger on the stack. Yeah, that that happens. That happens often, honestly. <laughs> that happens more often than it should. Uh, maybe I actually should have a Ramadic Savior in my deck because of Knight. But if my opponent doesn't have their own Rami naps. I think I'm just not gonna play the fountain. For whatever reason, I'm getting a spell queller vibe from my opponent, so I don't know if I want to side another summon respect. I certainly want scouts. Maybe I don't want one summon at a time. Let's try this. Knight of the Relic Warrior next to Vader. Yep. If I had a guy with the rest of the Splacer Flicker, my Master Waves, one thing it'd kill the Elementals. Wow, brutal. Yeah, one time I had I had somebody flicker my Titan in my attack step when I had an amulet in play. Things things did not work out for my opponent. His face was pretty priceless though. Worth it. Uh I don't think we can keep this too slow. This is also quite slow, but it's better. Looking for a scout here. Hey, yo. Uh, dumping sphere would be mildly problematic. I officially hate humans in modern. I have five cards in hand. I can't cast any of them. I mean, middle mage will do that to you. Stupid card. Turn to tracker. Ghost Quarter. Brutal. I think I do care if my opponent Ghost Quarters me. Yeah, I think I do care. So if they... I guess I... No, I don't care that much. If they go squatter me, I go down to four mana. I think I just let it go. I'm not going to be able to tighten next turn, most likely. This guy na blind name Stomp with Melee Mage's game, I'm quitting MTG. <laughs> Stomp is another one, I'm going to give you that. Now your opponent will need to go real deep.
Hmm. That's actually pretty good for us. We get some value here from my opponent not plusing or not zeroing, I guess. And if we draw, if we draw a castle, that would be like the nuts, basically. Never lucky. I am basically the unluckiest. Uh, I'm saving up Rex Age. I could use it to cl clear a clue, but I think that clearing um, the um, equipment is just too important. Splitting hair is where DNT for me in modern has always the death tide to the black splash, fatal pushes, wastelands, stranglers, where I hate has always been evaluated into package with the bear archetype, was a resurgence schools, etc. Splitting hair is but whatever really. I mean death and taxes is technically mono white, right? Like there's there's actually mono white uh, death and taxes lists, right? Not very good, but to be fair, none of those are really good. So What she got OP? Courser. Okay. That's value. Second courser. Sort of feast and famine. Okay, so my opponent has potential lethal next turn. Nice. Finally. I think I need to get a radiant fountain here. And I'm going to basically double chomp in order to clear the J's. <clears throat> double chomp attack. So they're going to block here, block here. But I get to clear the J's. So it's fine. But now I'm at 10, so I don't die. And I have an answer to the Sword of Feast and Famine. Fetch a Bailoth with Tutor? Not sure if we left any. No, uh, we're not playing Bailoth. It's not very good in, in the band matchups. Uh, what did my opponent top deck? Oh, Utopia Sprawl. Utopia Sprawl is what they drew. There it is. Okay, so they can really grow this tracker. They might even be able to set up lethal here. Do, are they? One, two? No, they can't. I'm just saying nonsense. <laughs> Just saying nonsense here. Okay. So they're gonna equip the tracker, make it a seven power creature. <clears throat> Uh, 
They also have skull. Okay. All right. That's kind of whatever. <clears throat> I think I'm going to have to pitch the summoners back here, which really sucks. They can draw into the Knight of the Reliquary. Okay, so they have one unknown card, which might be a Path to Exile. Might be a Path to Exile. It is a path to exile. The good, th the good thing is we get some snowballs on the way out, and now we can Rex Sage the Sword of Feast and We're gonna have a knight and another tracker. Asusa? So they have to be playing Ramming App, I guess. If they have Asusa, that's like the only reason to be playing Ramming App. The only reason to be playing Asusa is if you're playing Ramming App and Ghost Quarter. Wow, okay. I am mildly worried now. Yeah, it feels like it's similar to the old Value Town deck, except with blue. Okay, so... Do I just chomp? So I jump here, my opponent casts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so they can crack 3 clues. So if I triple block here, I trade with this. And if I triple block here, I trade with this. I have perfect info about their hand. Their hand is... Um, oh, but I'm actually... Yeah. I think I need to be greedy. I think I need to hope to draw a bounce land or A bounce land or a titan? Bounce land or titan are very good. Anything else, I just die, right? Like, my, can my opponent set up lethal? I can jump here, jump here. Any land, I guess, gives me one more turn. That counts. Oops. Yeah, no, that's fine. So I block here, block here, block here. We gain at least one more turn. Oh, there's the Ashiok. God damn it. Everybody and their mom is playing Ashiok nowadays. So they have Asusa and Ashiok.
the good thing is actually at this point in the game is much less scary. Almost every war place walker is miserable to play against. Yeah, it's not great. Certainly not great. So I can make two zombies, one, two, three, one, and one. They can crack here. It seems important for me to answer the tracker, but it's, I think it's more important for me to answer the knights. And then I just chump block. So, one, two, three, chump, chump. If they have Deputy of Detention slash Detention Sphere, we're in trouble, but... Dismember. Which I cannot cast. Unless I copy Radium Fountain, which I'm not really excited about doing. So now they have a Jace and the Heath. <laughs> Another Jace. There's a JTMS. Better than all. <laughs> Another Ashiok. All right, good to know about that for sure. So explosives is a solid draw. We've drawn none of those. There's Azusa, so I don't know any, I don't have any more info. Wow, that's, that's so, that's sick. Oh my God, my opponent's like living the dream over there. Holy crap. Whew. Wow. Absurd amounts of value for my, for our opponents. So now they have a path in hand. It wouldn't surprise you if my opponent is just like, just running out of playables. Running out of fetchables, sorry. It's actually possible that it would have been correct for my opponent to, to bounce this. So they can't crack anymore, so I can trade with the tracker here. Just chomp there. They are tapped out. Alright, give me something bueno. <laughs> Was that one good, chat? I can't figure out whether that one was, was a good draw. It's these. These has been called. 
Actually, it's correct for me to tap like this. Okay. This is actually not bad because now I can use the Vesuva to copy Field of the Dead. And now I can start producing more zombies. Ashiok plus. Okay. For whatever reason, my opponent was like, I've had enough of this. I'm going to start using my Ashiok to plus now. For whatever reason. <laughs> there are 28 and they have 8 clues. I know they have a path and I don't really know about anything else, I don't think. Wow, they minus Ashiok and they got one of my, my last basic. Clearly it was correct for them to minus the Ashiok. Uh, they drew a Jace. <laughs> I can't believe we're still in this game. This is so crazy. Now they have Ashiok. Now they have Arbor Elf. What else do they have? Utopia Sprawl. Okay, my opponent has enough blockers, unfortunately, for me. But we also have enough blockers. Ashiok minus us again for no apparent reason. And a hierarch. Misty Island. Tighten down. You got it. Phew! All right. If it, if they are playing a jury step, that could actually be a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we just trade here, right? That's 13. This is 14. They can sack this. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so I can... I guess that I can trade the next turn, but not this turn. Also, they should have played a normal hierarch path. I guess they're trying to play quickly because they have they are lower on clock and they still have to win another game. It's another Jace. They're, they play at least three Jaces. Hey Teddy, how's it going? What did you walk into? You walked into a match from 2017. We're playing against Bant, um, what's his name? Bant Value Town. Force of Bigger. I guess it doesn't really do much.
if my opponent taps out, I'm going to force their battle skull. They don't. Interesting. Uh, they're not playing retreat, I don't think. Like, I haven't seen it yet. I would imagine I would have seen it already if they were playing retreat to current home. At this point, I, I lost, like, complete track of, like, the cards in my opponent's hand. I'm just going to... Oh, okay. That is the problem. Yep, they found it before I did. Yep. I mean, to be fair, they were eventually going to get there. Chase. Okay. This is game two. We won game one. Sure, Ashiok bot minus this again. Sure. Oh, where's my own rhyming up now? <laughs> I'd cast over run. Yeah, where's my my credo who behemoth here, right? Crater Hope would be freaking sexy. So I throw one guy in there. I don't think my opponent knows about the force of vigor, I don't think, right? Sure. Why would they do that? Hmm. Well, I can't dismember this guy. Plus on you, then exile Ashiok. Not the best line I've ever seen. Is the opponent a Legacy Miracles player? I have no idea. Block. Hmm. 
We're slowly dying, chat. We're slowly dying. When it's at 82. I'm fairly certain my opponent is just going to time out. Not like 100% certain, but I'm fairly certain that that's the case. They're going for the decking kill. This member is right on time. <laughs> At this point, I'm just F6ing. I really doubt my opponent, considering how slow my opponent's deck is, I, I would be very surprised if they can manage to kill me in a minute and 30 seconds. But I'm going to like maximize my time advantage before we go into game three. Not playing a sweet deck. Game three. Uh, the Sashiok made me want to change my plan. I don't think it does. Hey, I had like a million zombies. So they clearly did not destroy all my permanents. Keep. Ship this one. Mm hmm. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to transmute, but that's fine. At least we can get some good value here. Look at this shit. Look at this shit. Whoops. They draw Shiok, but I'm ready. Another Ashiok. <laughs> Pog. Was that a good force? They did draw the other Ashiok. That's good to know. Put on the pressure. They have their own ramming app. Oh no. So we just play this out and we don't crack it. 
until we're ready. We're going to crack it instead. Again, it's not going to matter because my opponent is going to deck, but... I think that we were, we're still looking pretty good here. Sure, just play my knight into my, into my rhyming up. All right. I'm so done playing against Van Dex. They go so long. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, we're playing against Zach Allen. We're gonna snap keep this hand. Luca Boring, thank you for the follow. Yeah, if they are playing what they were playing last time, I guess they're not. Maybe some form of shadow. So form some form of Ursa. Explore. Do I think my opponent has a no in hand? I think they might, but I am. This is the way to. Basically, I could have I could have uh, fed, uh, played Boros Garrison in my end step, and then that makes it so next turn I can. Next turn I can Titan. But then my opponent can hold counter magic. So by playing the amulet. My opponent cannot hold up counter magic this turn. And they are forced to plus the Yoko on the amulet. Hmm. Okay. Certainly quite interesting. So I'm expecting my opponent to be holding the, the charm thing. They didn't make a food end step, which is interesting. Why would they why would they not make a food? Yeah, so they're representing Archmage's charm. I'm so close to being able to play around it though. I think it's worth it for me to just not do anything. Just pass the turn. Stupid goose, man. Because even when they don't use their mana, the goose just allows them to get value anyway, which is kind of brutal. Timur Ursa, we'll figure it out. <sighs> Where are my caverns? Still holding up charm. I think I'm, I this turn I I just need to jam. If my opponent untaps with Ursa, things get so much worse for us. Man, I was so close to being able to to play around it. Just don't think I can afford to wait anymore.
We can play around the mana leak though, which is good. Yeah, they have the charm. Damn it. Yep. That's what I've been playing around for the past four turns. <laughs> that card right there. It's basically an O2 versus Paradise with Upside. Ugh. So they're drawing the charm again. Yep. Things are getting out of control here. This really sucks. Just can't play around anything because they're drawing another Archmage's Charm next turn. So like things keep getting progressively worse and worse for me as time goes by. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Where are my caverns? Where are my Tolari Wests? Where are my cantrips? Those are the cards that I want to draw. Even make to make it, make it to make it food and step. It's brutal. Which deck do I think it's favoring this matchup? In, I mean, in this, in the, I guess this version they have blood moons in the sideboard, right? So like, it's of course significantly worse for us. But against the Simic Oko versions, I feel pretty comfortable. They're probably gonna make it a sanctuary here. Get back cryptic and like charm to draw two. Yep. I do have perfect information. So let's let's not despair yet. Uh. On a scale of zero to hundred, how far do you think they are? I think they're about they're getting about seventy right now. One thing that I'm gonna do is, huh? So I packed here. Oh, never mind. I'm actually dead on board. Yeah, that makes more sense. Whew, that's brutal. All right, so we want these, we want these, we want these, 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 and these. This out, this out. Um, Radiant Fountain out. Scout can come out, Explorers can come out, one amulet out. I'm actually going to bring in two of these members, and uh, we want the three explosives. Let's do something like this. GQ out. No, I figure out that uh, Ghost Quarter is actually important in, in the matchup because it's one of the ways to stop their cryptic loops. Okay, I'm going to keep this. Scout. It's the best thing we can find. Uh, 
Oh, I know. I know who Alan is. It's a cavern, that's what I was looking for the entire last previous game. I'm playing around that big sphere, that's why I didn't play the Groove Turf there. Do I guess? Oh, I'm stupid. My opponent has Blood Moon, they're not playing that big sphere. If they have Moon here, we were. Pretty much just dead. We were seeing a problematic game. Um, no, I don't think so. Because like the second that we have cavern going, then uh, like the game starts developing in a very different way. I think I'm actually gonna e on one here. Just blow up on his goose geese. Big name giant here. Blow this up. The best thing we can draw probably a dismember. We're super far behind still. There we go. I should have played the Gruel Turf there, by the way. My bad. Yeah, so I guess like getting the geese was a was a fine move because they were actually struggling a little bit on mana, but like they have a lot now, so it doesn't really matter. So we're looking for basic forest or force of vigor. I think those are the only two cards that matter at this point. Force of vigor, of course, by far the best alternative, right? If we draw a force, I think we might actually be ahead because we are going to get to a resolve a titan, and then we're going to get to bog my opponent so they don't get the embry value anymore. So, force, force of Vigor is the nuts. Scrotus McGee, thank you so much for the support. Thank you for sharing that Twitch Prime love. And welcome to the Primetime Stronghold for the second month in a row. Really appreciate it. Great content as always. Seriously, look, keep up the good work. Really appreciate what you do. Oh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, right, we're probably out of time. If my opponent has an Ursa, they can resolve this coming turn. They were probably just done. Because at that point they have all the mana. Man, the fact that these lists are running Blood Moon, it's it's so brutal. Yeah, I think they have to tap this for blue. Yeah. I, I don't think we can keep we can beat this anymore. Yeah. Brutal. The, the fact that Ursa now play, plays Blood Moon is... It's really, really bad for us. And it's it's one of the reasons why um, I want to, you know, get have access to Force of Vigor. It's a one-off though, so chances that we actually draw it and, you know, we, we see it at the proper time. Probably not great, but it's better than nothing, right? The player, the player who wanted someone to spec ban on Twitter. Yeah, that I, I never heard about that one before. That one was certainly funny. Yeah, I think I think it was a meme.
Oh, Astro Lady is a messed up card. There's been so many messed up cards. In terms of messed upness, I think it's Oko far and away at the very top, then Ursa, then Moxopal. Probably Field of the Dead before Moxopal, actually. What if we go down second Radiant Fountain? And, uh, yeah, so Scrotus, uh, this is uh, this is not the list that I would play in the Moto meta game. This is a list that I am playing uh, specifically trying to target the the meta game that I expect to see in in Austin, right? So that's why I'm I'm hard targeting aggro decks because everybody has told me that aggro decks are really really popular. So. First one was certainly a mulligan because it was too slow. This one is much better. I think I'm actually going to ship this Sanctuary here because all of my other cards are just very, very good. Popa, thank you for the follow. Hope once upon a time stays legal. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't really care. I mean, once upon a time, it's, it's obviously great for us. Like, like, there's no point ignoring it, but it's just more of a fact that it's just fine. Like, we can very easily survive it without once upon a time. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. We get to, we get to double like, explore this turn. We're going to see whether my opponent is on the... on Amulet, or they are actually playing uh, blue-green. Or they're playing Amulet. <laughs> Easy to figure that out. Uh, we are a little bit behind here, but never mind. Well, I guess my opponent does not have a land, so... We could still be ahead here. And here I think I'm going to once upon a time instead of exploring because if I don't find another land another bounce land uh, the explorer is gonna go to waste basically yes I find the cup of souls so this coming turn if I draw an Asusa it's easy mode obviously if I don't draw an Asusa so my opponent have Titan as their last card that's brutal wow I don't know whether they were missing the Titan or they were, miss they were missing the the land, but yeah. Should we increase Force of Vigor as well? Uh, no, I don't think it's that bad. Because Force is not even is not even that good against the the food decks, right? The, the band. It's not even that good against the the Simic Ursa decks. It's just good against the Blood Moon or Sadex because they also play Experimental Frenzy. We're playing Three Castle? Yeah, we've been for a while. Man, if we had found an Asusa there, we had a shot. We had found an Asusa out there once upon a time. Uh, the way that we win this game is basically if we find exactly amulet of the top and my opponent doesn't transmute for for pact of negation those are the things that have to happen Opponent has a cavern in hand, so Simic plus Toleria, and yeah. Well, I guess that if they transmute for a pack, they can't pay for it. So yeah, so we need to top deck exactly Asusa or second amulet. So we have. Seven potential draws. We have seven potential draws that we can find. I 
And we see the power of Castle on the other side of the battlefield, right? Doing a lot of work. I thought I was at sixth. Hmm, I guess I can transmit for another Titan if they want to. Actually, it seems like a great deal. So they get another Titan and then they transmute for. And then the second Titan gets Pact of Negation and they can actually pay for both Pacts. Yeah, that's that seems like the best line for my opponent. No, I think that what our opponent did is... is could they present lethal, actually? Yeah, I think my opponent actually missed lethal, which is a little bit more egregious. So they get... They use one land drop to play Stronghold. Then they play Boros Garrison, bounce it, uh, float uh, red-white... Uh, play Boros Garrison again, bounce a Stronghold. Yeah, my opponent just missed Lethal. They had a turn 3 kill. Because they had exactly enough land drops. Yeah, if... If my opponent hadn't been able to set up lethal, which they were, but they missed it, uh, but if they had not been able to set up lethal and they could only do uh, 16, which is what I think they thought was the, po the their position, then what they did is definitely much better. To try to go for interaction, now this is not a good line. To do this now is incorrect. Because like the only way that I win again is if I find multiple amulets, and if I find multiple amulets, you want to go squatter me in response to the to the untap trigger, because that's the way that you get the most value. Okay. Excavator Azusa, I guess on the draw I don't want forces. On the on, on the on the play I don't want forces. On the draw I would, I think. At that point it didn't really matter. It's just like a matter of you know ending the game in, on the spot versus just like I I, I, I still was zero point certain to win, right? So it's not that big of a deal that my opponent missed it there. Because they still found the line that leaves me with zero outs. But they, that was definitely a hasty Ghost Quarter sacrifice. If they hold up Ghost Quarter, they can't lose. Alright. Um, this is not keepable, unfortunately. This is also not keepable. Have to try to do better on five. All right, this is good. Um, bottom this. And bottom this. So if we find Asusa, we're actually we're probably a favorite to win this game. Okay, so they have a bounce. And they also have amulets. Asusa? Nope. We're still drawing towards... Now we're drawing towards Azusa, either Azusa or a Titan. Either one of those works it would, works well with this setup. Second amulet? Oh, we're probably just dead here now. I think my opponent just has to turn two. Whew. 
¿Cómo puedes sacar la CyberGuard? Braza, tenés que eh, sumarte a mi Discord. Después tenés que linkear tu Discord con tu, con tu Twitch account. Busca, eh, mezclas tus, tus cuentas. Y después tenés que esperar un par de horas. Y se va a actualizar el sistema. Y cuando se actualiza el sistema, entonces vas a poder acceder a todas las... A todos los sub-only channels. I think my opponent just like punted, but it didn't matter because they had another explorer. Yeah, now they I think they just like misclick through a trigger. Alright, yeah, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna sit here. Um Wow. I guess we wouldn't have gotten there because Pack for Asusa, play Asusa. First land drop, second, third land drop, make Titan mana, we have three mana in play. Yeah, we wouldn't have been able to pay for both packs, so we could we wouldn't have gotten there in any way. Yeesh! Rough stream today. Alright, one last one. Let's go out on a high note. Let's go out on a high note. I still think this list is very strong, it's just we somehow got brutalized multiple times. Multiple times today I felt in a situation where I was like struggling by like one tiny little thing. And if I if I have like that tiny, very, very likely scenario to happen, I actually just turn around the, the game completely. Uh, this hand is fine. Like we really want want to find a bounce land. That's like priority number one. Um, there we go. But now that we did, we're actually looking very good. Basically, any land that we find is going to to give us turn four Titan. Or if we find the castle, we can set up turn three Titan. Ooh, shadow. Please don't push me. God damn it. Hmm. You just play this out. Um, I don't think I'm going to be transmitting this anytime soon and holding, delaying playing out the bounce land makes an amulet top deck so much better. Jeez. Ha! <laughs> Value. Got him. Please no threat, please no threat. Oh. Alright, no threat. Good. Um Well I guess at this point I reset the gemstone. Traverse. Yep. Hmm. They tapped their blue mana there. Explore. Uh, I could explore again, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to transmute for a pact. Now, if my opponent, they would need like stop plus thoughtsies or double or thoughtsies plus inquisition or something like that. So we just makes it less likely. Unless my opponent just has lethal. If they have lethal, they just have lethal. But it makes it less likely for me to die. All right, so now the concession. If Ran for Sinister, do you think I need Ashiok in meta where I won't be playing against Samuel or Tiny Shift? Um, I mean, 
If you're not going to be playing the decks that the card is good against, then why play the card, obviously, right? So, the answer is no. The Omnizi, thank you so much for the subscription. Can I get my amulet to face this weekend? It would be my pleasure, Omnizi. It would be my pleasure, for sure. Make sure that you... That you stop by if you see me around. I will want explosives, and that's it. Yeah, okay. Cool. Take out Ghost Squatter. And Scouts. Yeah. Oof. All right. I'm in. This bog better, better get a lot of mileage. They're gonna stop this. Yeah. Oh, once upon a time a response. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm going to assume I copy the green source here. Okay, play out Goifo. I guess this one's up in the time we actually do want to resolve. Wow. That's insane. Whew, okay. This is how we lose this game. We figure we figure out how to lose this game. <laughs> we will phone that on that once upon a time. We got there. <laughs> okay. Bye bye, packed. Oh, that was ridiculous. So I can get I can get a Titan here, but I think it's better for me to do this because otherwise I can't even get the Titan. Oh, what am I even doing here? My opponent has lethal on board. Duh. <laughs> That's right. Por qué Tectonic Edge en vez de Ghost Quarter? Porque es bueno con Tectonic Edge es buena contra Valakut y contra Blue Green Titan Fields y, y Ghost Quarter no. Pa, no, es mucho menos buena. Y Tectonic Edge sigue siendo muy buena contra todos los matchups contra que Ghost Quarter es bueno. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Once upon a time. It's your time to shine, baby. It's your time to shine, baby. Give me one on top land. Yes. We did bottom a Titan there, and we also did bottom a Tolaria West, uh, which is really sucks. But 
at least we are starting pretty far ahead here. Susa. Well, and I guess I'm just gonna do this and just. Well, I guess I do want to play out the Bayloth. Because if my opponent has a Noko draw, I can actually clock them. I can actually pressure them, which otherwise I can't. Now they were gonna get my dismember anyway, right? English is so nice, I would, I would know it's not urinated. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, so here I'm going to play around Oko making my amulet into an elk. I'm going to name advisor. And I'm going to play this and I'm going to return the cavern to hand. This is worse if I draw Tory West, but I know that there's only one Tory West that I can draw because the other one is in the bottom of my deck. And this makes it so if my opponent finds an answer to my amulet, we're still fine. What age did I earn English in Argentina? Um, I went to like. English, I went to like study privately English for years. Let's probably have the stubby D here. I mean, I can't beat most things, so I'm going to like pressure them and put them on lethal and like try to, you know, if they don't draw, I can't, I can't beat TBR obviously. They just have it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I obviously cannot be Timur Battle Rage, um, but this way I like limit their draw steps significantly. That was the, that was the worst league I've played in a really really long time. Now I was not getting there anyway. I was crazy. The worst part is I play this league exactly as I say. This is the list that I'm going to play this weekend. <laughs> and, then, and then I play a league that goes like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I started learning English when I was um, maybe like seven or eight or something like that. I used to speak much better before I went to to school here in America. Because I, I learned like British English and then it got completely destroyed when I went to school and I started like <laughs> speaking worse. What is my MTGO rating? Uh, definitely much worse after that last league. 18-13. I'm usually, I'm usually above 18-50 but like that was a lot of losing all strung together. Zero steering. Yeah, the list has changed a lot, Omni Z. So if you if you haven't if you haven't like followed the the evolution over the past like couple of weeks or like three weeks, then I recommend you do that. Just turn on. That's not the eighty percent used to. Yeah, we had um we had some rough leagues, honestly. That's rough to put one four. Uh, I did make some mistakes for sure on the way here, but honestly just felt like I got unlucky a lot. I don't know if, if this is me just being stupid and trying to justify it, but I do feel like I, I put myself multiple times in situations where I have a ton of options, like a ton of alternatives that just like give me give me the win and then I just whiff for multiple turns. Like that game against Shadow, if we don't whiff on the once upon a time, which is extremely unlikely, but if we don't whiff on the once upon a time, I think that we, we win very easily. But then like I was down a land, which then meant that with the next up once upon a time I actually could not take the Titan, which meant that, you know, it was kinda of like a like a how how do you say it? Like a domino effect where like one thing that went out in the worst possible way just kinda of like devolved into just me not being able to to do anything 
it's fairly young. It makes sense why you speak English like a native speaker, slang and all. Yeah, I mean, again, like all all this slang was picked up when I was in school in Boston, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, within like six months, my English was completely messed up, but it's fine. But yeah, this is like 80% lose rate. <laughs> one and four instead of four and one. Um, still, I think I'm going to be playing something like this in the event this weekend. I'm going to... Hopefully, I'm going to be able to play at an LGS, like a Thursday night modern event uh, in Austin. Then I think there's a PTQ on Friday. And then, of course, the modern main event on Saturday and Sunday. So I think I'm going to be playing something similar to this for that event. Unless uh, something happens between like the, the, the Thursday and Friday PTQ uh, that make me go a different direction. But besides that... This list, actually, I, this list actually feels pretty good to me. Yeah, Omnisi, are you going to be there? Because I'm going there with Garrett, which is uh, another uh, friend from the Discord. And he's actually an Austin local, and he's going to like pick us up at the airport. He's being so nice. Um, but... But yeah, I'm going to keep everybody posted uh, in the Discord, probably. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Legacy is sweet. I don't have my Legacy cards with me, so I can't play Legacy, but can't stand Modern right now. I think that Modern is actually good. I think Modern is in a fine spot. I think it's going to be in a much better spot once Oko gets banned, um, because it's going to... Like, today we played against... I want to say, like, we played three leagues, and we played against Oko in 70% of our matches. We played against Affinity, that wasn't playing Oko, we played against Mono Red Prowess. We played against Amulet, which maybe they were playing Oko, maybe they were not, so we don't know about that. Um, I think everything else that we played against was playing Oko. Because the Ursa decks were playing Oko, all the band decks, we played against like four or five band decks. Oh, like the, the band value town deck did not have Oko, but that, that's honestly, that, that has to be a budget consideration. Because that deck, like if you're playing that deck, you probably have to play Oko. Uh, what do you think about the new Blue Green Titan on Amulet? Uh, I think that it's, it's a good deck. And I think that it's a mistake to compare it to Amulet, as it is much closer to Scapeshift than it is to Amulet. Uh, but I think it's a very solid deck, and I think it actually has a solid Ursa matchup, which is the reason why people are doing that. I'm flabbergasted they didn't ban Oko before the GP. I wouldn't have minded that, honestly. Uh, that's probably... Yeah, that, that would have probably been fine. Uh, but yeah, it, it's understandable. Like, the same thing with Hogak, right? Like, they could have been Hogak before the GP, but they didn't because they were, like, a bunch of modern events that people had prepared for. And then, like, Hogak just <laughs> just took over the entire event. But if you look at, like, um, if you look at all the online events and everything, it's, like, the top 8 is, or, like, the top 16 is, like, 70 or 80% Oko decks. Like, consistently, like, literally every single event. Like, the mocks, there was, like, the modern champs, there was, like, the challenges and stuff. In all of them, you're going to see that there's, like, a shit ton of Oko decks. And that is because the card is busted, and it's, I think right now it's the best thing to be doing in the format. Um, but is this the final list? This is... If this is not the final list, it's very close. Game 1, I think I want something like this. The only thing I'm considering is um, actually playing some Okos myself in the sideboard. Two Okos at most over the Dismember and the uh, Tile Tracker. That is, those are literally the only changes that I'm considering. Because I was thinking about Beast Within, that's what I was testing over Force of Vigor, but I think that with Orsodex moving to Blood Moon, I think that just not playing Force of Vigor is it's it's a little bit too risky. Like I have to leave myself the out to you know draw into something when my opponent has a Blood Moon in play. It'll just be like the last time an event where Oko was legal. It was just like, yeah, exactly. It's 
I don't know. I mean, Wizards does the thing, to, the things that they do, but yeah. I think that it was cool that it, they owned to it when they banned it for standard, but I think they're taking way too long to ban it in modern. Honestly, um, I think that Oko should already be banned right now. So that's the that's the thing. That's why I was I was thinking that if I'm not gonna be like if if there's like one last event to play Oko, maybe I should be playing it in. So yeah, so these are the only slots that I am discussing. Everything else is pretty much exactly what I'm gonna be running. So these 13 cyber slots are probably gonna be what I'm going to be playing, and this 75 it's probably what I'm going to be playing. Uh, the other the other thing that could happen is I move Rex H to the main deck over the fourth explorer, and then I bring back a dismember. So I use that empty slot from the Rex H and the Tile Tracker to play Yoko. So th that would be the other alternative. But that that's pretty much it. To both watch and play. Yeah, uh, that, that's fair, Daniel. That's fair for sure. Um, hopefully they ban it soon, and then that means that I get more viewers. <laughs> because people want to see more modern. Uh, but yeah, I think Amulet is going to be a good a good option for... A, certainly a good alternative for this weekend. I'm going to see how it actually works out in like, the, the last couple of slots. Again, it's basically going to be up to what happens between tomorrow and the day after. But everything else is going to be what you guys see here. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for checking it out. Uh, I will uh, post some new material probably during the week. I'm, I think I'm going to be, I'm not going to stream next week, unfortunately, because I'm going to be working all week. Uh, my band has, a, has a, a residency, so I'm not going to be able to stream. But I might be making some like YouTube exclusive content so that, you know, so that you, you folks don't miss me that much. Um, please don't play this list. Mana base is still horrible. What do you mean? The mana base is excellent. That's like the mana base is like the best thing. <laughs> the mana base is the best thing for this list. Have you played in the current in the current meta? Like if I had found one of my Cavern of Souls, I would have won the game against Ursa. Uh, same thing with Field of the Dead. Um, like if if you're telling me that this mana base is not correct, it's because you you have not been playing much modern lately. But, yep, thank you so much for checking it out. And, yep, stay tuned on Twitter and Discord and that good stuff. And I will see you on the following week. Bye-bye.